Hello guys, Danny from Dance Tech. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at adding NAS from Terramaster. This is the F2 220, the two bay NAS featuring, well, it just features two bays, and you can also set up RAID 0 and RAID 1 with this NAS. I think it does also support J board and also a single disc. So, yeah, we're going to be having a look at the device. I'm going to go over the, um, yeah, just an overview of the device. I'm going to go over the installation. I'm going to show you how, how to actually set up the NAS as is a bit to it and then yeah just kind of at the end recommend it and not after I've done some speed tests and I'm going to be comparing this to the previous uh, Terramaster device I looked at and also the Synology 2 bay now since they are very very similar devices this one is a little bit more expensive but I suppose this one is made of good old metal while the Synology one was made of plastic um, but one thing that I suppose is different between this one and also the Synology NAS is the whole interface since you know the two different companies have made their own interfaces but you interface with, there we are. So yeah, let's um, kind of get into the review, and yeah, first, let's just take a look at what we get in the box. So peeps, to get it started, as for a quick unboxing, inside the box you get the enclosure itself and many accessories in the cardboard box. These include a power adapter, both a UK and European plug type, many screws for both hard drives and SSDs, a screwdriver, some documentation, and finally a network cable for data transfers, as this is indeed a network attached device. The network cable is CAT6. Packaging overall is great and offers protection against the main device in the box. So onto the main unit, it comes in at 22.7cm in height, 11.9cm in width and 13.3cm in depth. The weight of the unit is one6 kilo with two SSDs installed. Now the front of the device features all the disc and network activity LEDs, a power button and the access to the two trays of which you can install either hard drives or SSDs. The maximum capacity of this NAS is two 8TB drives. Both of the sides feature the Terramaster logo printed in black and under the device's thick rubber pads to reduce hard drive vibrations on hard surfaces. Around back there is a small fan which blows the warm air out of the unit of which I can report is extremely quiet. You can also set the fan speed within the software. You'd also find two USB ports around back. These are 3.0 and 2.0 ports as you would assume. And in addition to this you will also find a 12 volt power input and a gigabit data port. Now just like the Terramaster D4310 that I checked out 3 months ago, this unit is also made of both plastic and metal. Overall pretty damn sturdy, but I would have liked to seen the drive sleds to be made of metal, or even the front pieces to be made of metal at least. As for some technical specifications, this unit runs an Intel Celeron, the dual core 2.41 GHz G1800 CPU with 1 MB of cache, with a power rating of a mere 10 watts. So moving on to the setup, you want to install your drives, you want to slide out the two sleds from the front and line your drives with the appropriate screw holes and install them. The two SSDs I'm going to be using for my testing today are the Toshiba Q300 512GB SSD and a Kingston V300 120 gig SSD. That's one of the older models before Kingston decided to gimp their, th their V300 drives and sell them by the same model number. Terrible. Anyhow, both of these drives are rated at 500 megabytes per second read and write speeds. Once you've installed your drives, connect both the power cable and the provided gigabit network cable. As for the software setup, you'll need to first navigate to start.terra-master.com and read the instructions for configuring your particular unit by selecting the model number. I did select the wrong one initially, but the software download is the same. So first you want to download the TNAS software, and then once this has been run and you've logged into your NAS and drives have been scanned, you'll then want to install the TOS or TerraMaster operating system onto the unit. During the setup process, there is a link to download this, so no need to worry. I'm not sure why this isn't all automatic, but I suppose it isn't that confusing. And if you are watching this video review, you shouldn't have any issues at all. So once the TOS is installed, the device will reboot and ask you to set up both a username and a password for the device. I also entered my email here, but I didn't seem to get a verification code. Good job it wasn't needed. The next step is to select the drives you've installed and set the RAID type. I recommend RAID 1 Data Protection Mode. In my opinion, the other modes don't make much sense for a 2-bay NAS. Finally, you'll be presented with the TOS desktop here you can access the built-in file manager, apps and the control panel to change all types of different settings. As for a quick test of the speed you can achieve in RAID 1, you can access the NAS in the Network tab in Windows, double-click the NAS and enter the password. This initial quick test shows 80 megabytes per second write from the local SSD. 
As for using the Nasa in the TOS desktop, you can view all types of files here, and of course, download and upload files through the network, although I've found speeds to be a tad slower doing it this way, versus mapping the network drive in Windows. I'll show you how to do this a little later on, as I see this as an essential thing to set up. Now the control panel option in the TOS desktop allows for many settings to be changed. This includes managing off the RAID volumes, changing all types of network related settings and viewing the drive statuses, which is where failed drives would be reported. There are also settings for viewing the NAS and CPU temperatures and of course settings for changing the fan speed of which I mentioned some time ago. As for some further read and write tests, to map the drive you'll first want to find the name of your NAS. You can grab this from the network tab in the computer menu or by opening the TNAS software again. Once you have this, right click in the computer menu where you see all of your local C and D drives and press add network location. This NAS is called TNAS-9264, then type the username, in this case admin and press enter. Now we have this set up, the drive is easily accessible without having to use the TOS desktop and will allow for easier testing of speeds. For the first test we have a 7 gig file transfer of all the final files from my last video, the Justice CPU Code Review, from my internal SSD boot drive to the NAS and see a write speed of 80.2 megabytes per second. I decided to swap the RAID config to RAID 0. So first up for a write test we now see 105 megabytes per second write. And as for a copy back to the desktop from the NAS, we see the same result, demonstrating the real life maximum speed of the Gigabit interface, 105 megabytes per second. Comparing this read speed figure to the video footage I have of the Synology NAS, the one I took a look at four months ago, this too capped out at 105 megabytes per second, the real life gigabit limitation. As a power draw from the wall, the results were surprisingly low. The figures I have are between 6 and 9 watts with the two SSDs installed. It really does depend on what you're doing, rather reading or writing or idling. Overall, a very efficient device, and these tests should give a representation of what typical power draw figures are going to look like. Anyhow, let's conclude on this unit on camera. So peeps, there we are, that was my review of the Terramaster F2 220 Tube NAS, a very good unit, and as you've seen with the uh, Synology NAS also, speeds do cap out at about 105 megabytes per second, both are just very solid units. As I mentioned in the intro, this one is made of metal, and the interface is a little bit different to the one that, um, you know, Synology uh, do make, uh, the, I've forgotten the model number of that one, but um, both NASs are very, very good, and um, yeah, I really can't see why I can't recommend this one. It's a very good device and works well. Insulation, I suppose um, it could be a little bit easier, but overall it is a good solution and um, yeah, it works. So there we are. So thanks for watching. Please feel free to like, comment and also subscribe and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.